Hello everyone, John Culp from Culp Racing Transmissions. Welcome back to the channel. Today, this is going to be a tutorial on how to install our shift kit. Um, it's for the do-it-yourselfer, so this video is going to be instructions on how to do it. I'm going to go step by step, and um, I hope you like it. All right. Our, our shift kit uh, is going to work both for 727s and 904s. It really isn't going to matter if it's a lockup or a non lockup. Uh, I'm using a valve body that I already took the time to clean, so you won't have to see me spilling oil all over the place, and you'll be able to see the parts much clearer. Before I go over the, the how-to to do this valve body, I, I want to go over a few of the tools that you're going to need. Are going to be a screwdriver and a Phillips, and possibly a Torx, depending on what year your valve body is. You're going to need two seal picks, a 90 degree and a straight, if not at least a straight, a 3 16 Allen wrench, maybe a small pair of pliers and if you want you could go uh, get some some nylon brushes this this is nylon for if you really want to clean the bores out nice it's not a must but it's something I do also a piece of a red scotch bright will help um, for polishing the valves so th this will be uh, a valve body that um, uh, this video is going to be in how to put the shift kit in but at the same time we're basically going to be rebuilding the valve body so um, and it's really geared towards uh, the, do, the do it yourselfer I'm going to uh, take my time as best I can to go over everything uh, it's going to be best if when when you take your parts apart you're going to have a, a, a left side and a right side of the valve body once we get it apart. I'm going to show you how to nicely line up every spring and, and valve along with the plate on here so it, it's easier for you to go back together. So let's get this baby going. The first thing you want to do, the, the parking rod, which is connected to the rooster comb, is held in by an E-clip, which I already removed. I suggest you take the E-clip and just click it on the rod and send it off to the side. First thing we're going to do is remove the oil filter. There's three screws that hold the filter on. If you are going to go through the time to clean your valve body thoroughly, thoroughly, I do suggest that you do get a filter. These yellow filters are day, called Dacron filters. These are the ones that I, I use the most. I like them over the uh, screens. And in 1966 and up, they had one hole. Uh, for suction and 62 to 65 they had two holes Now you can use a two hole on a one suction valve body But you can't use a one hole on a two suction valve body So just make sure you have the correct gear Take your filter and set it off to the side Now I use a screw gun For everything when I'm doing valve bodies um, If you have one and you want to put your bit in there that'd be great if you don't then you can you can manually use your your screwdriver or your um, Phillips whatever you want to do so uh, and just a quick reference uh, this valve body um, has the part throttle kick down module on it which is right here it's a little added piece that's on there 
Um, a lot of the valve bodies, um, the early valve bodies don't have this. Um, and this is what I call, what we call a, a six screw plate. One, two, three, four, five, six screws on the top. The early valve bodies that don't have the part throttle kick down only have four screws. This shift kit that I'm doing will work for both valve bodies, at least the instructions. There will be little small little differences, but the valve body um, instructions will be the same. You'll also notice too that this little bracket here that holds in the pressure regulator valve and the converter valve, that this bracket um, is a little bit different on the early, the uh, the early, the late 60s and earlier valve bodies than they are. Don't let that, you know, make you nervous. It's just little small changes over the years. So we'll go ahead and get this valve body. I always call this the lower half. They also might call the channel plate. And I call this the upper half as it would be in the car. This would be pointing up to the transmission. When you pull the oil pan off, this would be pointing down. We're gonna take this thing apart. Now when you guys are doing this at home, if it's your, if it's your first time, just take your time. Don't, uh, don't be in a rush to get everything apart. Because the, the, the more that you take your time, the easier for you it is going to be going back together. This particular valve body has a high pressure spring and ball right here. Not all of them have that. Sometimes they have a high pressure spring and ball in the lower half and it'll be about here. Some of these have them, some of them don't. So just like I said, pay attention to what you are taking apart. Here's our lower half. There's uh, sometimes there's two check balls in here. On this one, there isn't. Also, this plate may be shaped differently. Some of them only look like this. Some of them go longer. It's just little little changes Chrysler made over the years. The separator plate will come off. Now, most of these valve bodies will have a chuck ball right here and a chuck ball up here. And you can tell because this just has one big hole right here. If it was a check ball, there would be, let me get this in there. There would be a ball, wrong hole, this one. There'd be a small hole and a bigger hole here and here. If you do have the two balls here, you leave this one out all the time If you, if you leave this ball out, you get a, bit of, a little bit of a stronger third gear. If you leave this out, you get a stronger engagement. But if you have a four-wheel drive truck, I recommend that you keep that in there. If you have a two-wheel drive car, then go ahead and leave it out. This is the separator plate. We're gonna, I'm going to show you uh, which holes to drill at a later date, right before assembly. Here's our high pressure spring and ball. Then you have one large, and that, that spring and ball that goes here is the largest ball 
It's actually larger than this one. This one is the same size as the spring and ball on the rooster comb. So in this valve body, you have one big ball, then one, oh, my, my uh, seal pick is magnetic. You got one, two, three, four, five small balls and one big one. This is 78 later, you'll have another one over here. Um, with today's, everybody's got a phone. Uh, don't be afraid to take a picture before you uh, just empty the, the check balls. And that goes for anything. If, you, if you're not sure or if you don't have a book, I mean, you can find all the stuff on the Internet fairly easy. So we're going to go ahead and, and put the check balls off to the side. I'm going to go ahead and take off this bracket that holds the pressure regulator spring and I hope I'm close enough. And a converter charge spring. You will have the bracket, the spring adjuster, the spring, and then the pressure regulator valve. And then right next to it is going to be the converter spring. I'm going to use my 90 degree seal pick. to get the converter valve out. Now see how I got all this lined up in a row here? It, and then you line it up as it, how it comes out and then when you go to assemble it's going to be lined up and how it goes together. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to set them on my clean rag in order that they, they came apart. I don't need to do that but I recommend that you do that. So now that we got the pressure regulator valve out and the converter valve out, we're going to go to the other side and take these two screws off. And this plate is for the boost circuit. Two screws and a plate. And there's going to be three valves in here that go together like this. That's how it goes together. The, there's a sleeve and then there's the valve. Lay those on your rag in the order that they came apart. So, so you can see how I'm doing that right here. Then we're going to take off the, the part throttle kickdown module, which is right here. Now behind this are going to be some springs. So you're going to be careful that the springs don't shoot out on you. Now this part throttle kickdown module, um, there's nothing to the shift kit for this, but I'm going to go ahead and take it apart so you can see what's in it. You have this little uh, clip that just slides up with your finger. Then inside is a spring and a valve, and that's for passing gear. And then there's a valve right here. That's it. So if you want to clean all this, there's always gunk caught in these little passages. Use some brake clean or solvent to make sure you get that nice and clean and then polish the valves. 
Now, if your valves are steel like these, you can polish them. I put them in a drill like this, and I go slow, and I, I just polish the flat ends of the valve. Now, you got to be a, just a little bit careful that you don't round off these edges. Um, the these are kind of they're not sharp but they're they are sharp not to the, your not to your fingers they're sharp but that's what keeps the bores clean is the if you round these off um, it, the bores can't stay clean and you you'll just cause some leaks and maybe some sticky valves you would just put this in your drill and. Put it in your drill and spin it, and only don't don't try not to round the edges off of the valve. I mean, you, it would take a lot to do that, but I've seen people do it where they round those off. You just want to clean the flat lands on the surfaces. Now, if your valves are made out of aluminum, you, you, which some of the late model ones are, you cannot polish those. You got to leave them alone. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the valve spring and the re spring retainer back in. We're going to put that round valve in there and we're going to put the plate with the three screws that hold it on and set this off to the side. Now we'll see the back of the one two shift valve and spring, the two three shift valve and spring, and the one two control valve and spring. So each spring you can pull out and then pull out each valve and connect each valve to the spring that it goes. Now you can't get these wrong but it's it would be best for you to keep them in order and then take these and set them off to the side and then you can clean them and polish them for reassembly. Now on this side we have the uh, shuttle valve and the 1-2 governor valve. We'll go with Chrysler's terminology. Let's take out the governor plugs. And they're really not plugs, they're valves. Take your plate and your screws, set it off to the side. You can just tip these out. I'm trying not to bang on this because every time I bang on the table, the camera jumps around. I don't want to get no one, uh, I don't want to make no earthquake videos. So these three valves, the, the bigger of the two is a one two shift. This is, um, the two three and this is the shuttle valve. We'll set those off to the side also. I got two valves left in here. Well we're gonna take this plate off so we can thoroughly clean underneath there. And then you have the other end of the shuttle valve right here. There's another E-clip back there. You're just going to pop off the E-clip. Push the valve out and then you're going to catch the springs at the same time. Watch this. You're going to push the valve out, lift up, and see how I caught the springs or the spring at the same time. Then I, I'll do just a small little reassembly Put the plastic sleeve on there, put the spring in there with another plastic sleeve, and the E-clip. Just so when you go back for a reassembly, again, it makes it easier. Alright, last thing we have are the, is the manual valve and the, the kickdown valve. I 
I use these really Mambo E clips, so the so they're are they're stronger than factory. This ball and spring went right here. That's for the rooster comb. This is the rooster comb. This is uh, the 70, is it 70 and later or 69 and later? Has a plastic isolator. They all have a little rubber seal in here. So if you, you should get that in your rebuild kit. This is a kick down. Um, rod, I guess you would say. It goes to the kickdown linkage and touches the kickdown valve. And then pull out the manual valve and then the kickdown valve, which is a, a sleeve and a valve with a spring. And there's another valve on the inside. So this will have valve, spring valve and a sleeve. So now that the valve body is completely apart, you're going to take this half and you're going to clean it very uh, thoroughly. You're going to find, especially back here in these little crevices here and in here, uh, all through here, little gunk over the years builds up. So you want to take and clean it as thoroughly as you can, both the upper half of the valve body, the separator plate, and the lower half of the valve body. Get yourself a can of carb clean or some brake clean, whichever one will poison you the least. Spray it all off, and then if you have some compressed air, blow it off so it's nice and clean. Um, we also have a granite block with a, a thing of sandpaper on it. And we take the valve body and we flat sand the surfaces here and here. I also do it to the upper half. So um, these things are, the, you can't imagine the warpage you find on them, you know. So if you can do that, fine. If you don't, if you don't have a way of doing that, then don't worry about it. It's, it's not a must, but we do that on every valve body. So, um, then clean all your parts, all your valves. Do them one at a time. In the drill, again, you're gonna take the valve. You want to be careful not to put the uh, machined end of the valve in a drill. Just use some memory cloth and go nice and easy and polish each one of the lands. And make sure you put that valve back in with the spring that you're using. So now we're ready for drilling the holes and what sizes and where at. This separator plate is an early valve body separator plate. Should be the same from 62 to 68, which will be a four screw top. This hole in the later valve bodies is round. If yours is round, you can drill it out to five, six, five, to five thirty seconds. If it's triangle, leave it alone. This this hole here, circled, is also 5.30 seconds. This hole here, circled, is 5.30 seconds. That hole will probably be, already be big, but if it's not, 5.30 seconds. On the 69 and later valve bodies with part throttle kick down, this hole, which normally is triangle, and the early valve bodies is round, drill that one this one, this one, here, and if your hole is smaller here, drill it. Everything is all one drill bit size, 5 seconds. 
with the upper half of your valve body completely disassembled with no valves there is one modification we have to do to the body and it will require a drill bit that is 11 24 and a center punch I forgot to tell you that in the beginning of the video you're gonna take the uh, the cover that goes right here for your um, reverse boost and you're going to place it with the machine side down on the valve body and you're going to take a screw and what we need to do is put a little partition by drilling this right here so by taking this and putting it right in the middle of that land and then tighten the screw this will act as a tool to keep the drill bit center. I'm going to focus in as close as I can on this one for you guys. So I'm going to put it right in the middle there. And then tighten it down. See how high up that? It's right in the middle. I'm going to take my center punch, it's a spring loaded, and I'm going to punch it right in the middle like so. Then we're going to put the drill bit in. Now if you guys got a drill press, this, this might be a little bit easier for you guys. I've done it this way uh, for a while. And um, if you go nice and slow, you, you'll be just fine. You only need to go down, I would say, 200, 200 thousandths. So if you wanted to measure that on your drill bit, and then put a piece of tape on there, including the thickness of this, or just eyeball it. It's not finicky. It's not. It, it's, you're not going to hurt it if you go. Well, you will if you drill it all the way through to another passage. But you can see how deep that is. I believe that passage is about. Shit, it's every bit of five hundred thousands deep. We we only need to go down maybe half the partition so we'll go ahead and start this and this is something I want you just to do nice nice and easy and here again if you have a drill press this is probably be a little bit better I just don't want to take the camera and the drill out to the drill press to do this but I can just do it right here pretty good. I'll go ahead and take off the plate. And then blow off all the chips out of there with some compressed air. And there's there's your modification. It's perfect. So Chrysler was nice enough to position that right where it's supposed to be and screw it down and you can use that as a guide plate as a tool to um, make sure that that modification is done. It was that easy.
So we're going to start reassembling this. You have your valve body completely clean. You, you've already drilled your holes in the separator plate. If you have a four wheel drive, you want to put that check ball back if you have it. If you didn't have that check ball, don't worry about it, leave it out. If your valve body did have a check ball here, no matter if it's two wheel drive or four wheel drive, you go ahead and leave that out and there'll be a, it'll help with the firmness of the shift. This valve body doesn't have a round hole right here. Some of them do. And then there'll be a little screen there. That screen comes in an overhaul kit. If you're not rebuilding the transmission at the same time, you can just use a little bit of uh, your cleaner and clean it off and you put that on first. Then you put it, put it on there. When lining up your separator plate, I always take four screws and I put them in each four corners of the valve body. And that basically will line your separator plate up to the lower channel plate. Get your hold down bracket and the screws for it. Now all these screws, they're either long or short in this particular valve body. Um, but I do have some mediums from some late model, valve, late model valve bodies that I use just for the channel plate. But all your screws will be the same size. Use your screw gun. Don't make sure you turn it down so it, it ratchets. Or your screwdriver or your Phillips and tighten it down. Now your lower half's done. One of the modifications that you're going to have to make is, an, is, is cutting down your kick down valve, the valve that goes on the inside. I hope you guys can see that. And here is the measurement of how much that you want left when you, you can just grind this down and make sure that this surface is flat. Here is your measurement. So now you're going to take the kick down valve that you just modified and use your CRT yellow spring and install the valve. Install the spring. You're going to discard the factory spring off to the side. You will not reuse that. Then the top half of the valve and the sleeve. You're also we're going to check every valve to make sure that it's free. See this, this upper valve here? Move it nice and free. We are going to install the pressure regulator spring. Uh, I'm sorry, we are going to install the pressure regulator valve. We are going to install the converter valve. The factory stock converter spring. We are going to discard the factory pressure regulator spring and you install your red CRT pressure regulator spring. You put your spring adjustment on top. You take the bracket that holds the two on. Put it over. And you got to make sure when you put this down that your valve or your spring for the converter charge is in the little loom. I'll show it to you once I put this spring in. See how my spring is in this little section right here? You can see it right there. 
and I have my adjustment. This is your pressure regulator adjustment. You're going to use your 3 16 Allen wrench and you're going to turn your adjuster until it's flush. All right. So now we're going to go to the opposite side here and we're going to put in our boost spring. I'm, I'm sorry, our boost valve. You just use gravity, a little bit of gravity, and it's got to go in like that, that far. See that? Then you're going to put the sleeve in, and then the inner valve that goes in the sleeve, like so. Then you take the plate with the two screws put it on all right it's time for some shift valves we're going to first start off with the shuttle valve. We're going to take that E clip back off, and then you have the spring with the two plastic sleeves on there. We're going to put the shuttle valve in by itself. Then I, you're going to use this little baby blocker rod supplied in your CRT kit, and then the top valve. You, I always put the spring on there, but it doesn't do nothing. So if, if you want, you can discard it. The spring doesn't do nothing, but I just put it over there. I don't know why, I just do. But if you want, you can discard the spring. Then you put the top of the shuttle valve on. And what that blocker rod does, is it keeps this from ever moving again. You want to make sure that you're flush that this valve is is not sticking above this machine surface. Then put the governor valves in. The one two governor valve and a two three governor valve. And your then your plate and your screws. Now the two plastic sleeves, the spring, and the E-clip that came off of that shuttle valve, you're going to discard and not use them. And it'll look like this. That no longer will be on there. We're going to turn the valve body around. And we're going to start with our shift valves. You're going to put the one two shift valve in. Then you're going to discard the factory 1-2 shift valve spring and use your CRT red 1-2 shift valve. That spring will make the timing under wide open throttle the same as the 2-3 shift. So if it shifts, let's say, at under wide open throttle, it, the 1-2 shifts at um, let's say 5,000 RPMs, but the 2 3 shift shifts at 5,400 RPMs. The spring, the red spring, will, be, will bring these much closer together. It should be the same, but a lot of times it'll be maybe 100 above or below what the, the, the third gear shift will be. 
So this spring is just to um, equal the split. Or it's like a split shift. So under wide open throttle, the RPM is the same for the one two shift as it is for the two three shift. Where we have all our valves and springs in here, I want you to take one of the small chuck balls and stick it in that spring. And what that does is that keep that valve from moving. Keep that valve from moving, the valve body will shift harder. You take your part throttle kick down module, which is already assembled, put it onto the valve body. So now this is completely done. We're ready to assemble the two halves. You're going to put the high pressure spring and ball, if you have one there. Some models do and some models don't. You're going to put the large chuck ball in the large bathtub, the one next to it. The one on top, there'll be one, two, three, four, four chuck balls, small ones, one large one, and then the bigger, that's even bigger, is this one right here. And where the chuck balls go. You will leave this one out where you made the modification to the casting. Sometimes if you want to take a little trans gel and put that on that ball to keep it on the spring so when you're putting the two halves together it doesn't pop out on you. And then squeeze it. Line up the upper half to the lower half. and put all your screws in. and then tighten them. Once you tighten all your screws, go back and double check all the screws on the valve body to make sure they are all tight. And don't forget this pressure regulator adjustment is you're going to turn this adjustment until the plate that presses on the spring is flush with the outside of this bracket. Make sure your kick down valve and spring moves. This piece right here 
is the stop. You could, I never usually adjust that. Chrysler has uh, two ways to identify the year of your valve body. Um, usually it's in a circle or in a straight line. This one here, let me get up close, has a, a bar with 12 holes in it and each hole has the little dots filled up. So this is a uh, December of 72 bottom half. And this one's a circle with 12, uh, with 12 uh, lines as in a star. And it only has one filled with dots. So it's a January. And it's January of 73. So even though this was casted, this bottom half was casted in late 72, I would consider it a 73 valve body. So if you want to know what year your valve body is, you can do that. The last thing is to put on your park rod and put on a new Dacron filter. And, and that's it. So I want to thank everyone who uh, stopped by. I'm, I'm going to review this video thoroughly. And I'm going to go now because the phone won't stop ringing. Thanks for watching. More part to you.